Well guys, one of my installs failed. It was about a year ago when we did the install. Everything was good to go. Everything looked good. But at this point, a year later, it is not the case. It is not good to go and it does not look good. So I wanna to talk to you guys about what went wrong here. All right guys, so here is the room we're working in and here is the ceiling that failed. And this ceiling reminds me of a joke my friend Phil told me. He said he knows some people that look good from far, but when you get up close, they're far from good. And that's the same story on this ceiling. So yeah, we're gonna correct this. We're doing the Wayne Scott in here and these people were nice enough to let us fix this discrepancy while we're doing this project. That way we can have everything masked off. We got the floor protected, all that good stuff. So I need to spray the ceiling first before we do anything. So you could probably see what's wrong with it even from here being this far away, but I'll take you guys up there and show you even closer. But what's going on here is a expansion and contraction issue and I'll talk to you about my thoughts on it and what I think has happened and what actually what I know has happened and what will happen. So pretty cool ceiling design. They showed me this one. We've got these one by six tongue and groove boards meeting in the middle in this kind of X pattern. And then we've got a one by eight intersecting dead center. And then we've also got a one by two going around the perimeter. This install, when we did it, it was good to go. Everything was nice and tight and just looking good as can be. We hit all of our ceiling joists on this install. I made sure of it. We marked off our joists and shot into them with uh, 16 gauge nails. So it's not a matter of, you know, a bad install in the sense of like, is it gonna fall down or is it, you know, is it even attached up there good enough? The problem is, like I said, an expansion and contraction issue. And you can see as we get closer up, those joints that we caulked have now separated. And you can see the issue. And like I said, when we installed this, all these boards were nice and tight. We tapped each one against each other with a mallet and made sure they were all touching before we shot them with those 16 gauge finish nails. And as you can see with the caulking separation in the middle, it's pretty obvious these boards have contracted. So basically what's happened here is when we brought these boards in and installed them, they had a moisture content that was higher than they have now. They dried out. And as the wood dried out, it shrank. And each one of these boards is now smaller than it was the day that we installed it. That's why you're seeing this about eighth inch gap between each and every one of these boards because they were not stabilized when they were installed. They needed to be acclimated or at least checked for moisture content before they were installed. And that is totally my fault. I own it 100%. These boards were straight from the lumber yard the day that we installed them. Like many of our installs, you know, we don't have materials sitting on site. We usually bring them that day and install them that day. However, at this moment in time, I was not using a moisture meter. So now I'm checking that stuff and making sure we're good to go before we proceed and have this issue happen again. Now the good news is this is an easy fix in the sense of we don't have to take anything out. Now that these boards are stabilized, they've been in here for a year, all we have to do is cut that old caulking out. I say that's all we have to do. That's a pretty tedious task, but it's not really a big deal in the sense of, you know, tearing out and reinstalling. So all we have to do is cut that old caulking out. We'll get as much of that out as we can. So we have a nice clean joint and then we'll just simply reseal that off with new caulking. So we've got a good solid install. We've already got a nice base coat of paint on there with a good sheen and we're gonna go over it with the same same paint, same exact paint. All we simply have to do is just reseal this off and respray it, which the ceiling is really easy to spray. I just put my extension on and I literally just walk like this back and forth spraying this. So all in all, uh, not too bad, but still a failure. So let's fix it. I started cutting out this old caulking with the utility knife, but it only took me about a minute to realize that this is gonna take forever, even though it worked. 
is a little sketchy too because the blade is so sharp. I didn't want to cut the tie and groove boards. So after messing around with that for a little while, I quickly switched over to a flathead screwdriver and I just pushed the screwdriver through that gap. It fit in there just fine because the gap's pretty big. Like I mentioned, it's about an eighth of an inch between the boards. So what amazes me about this footage, watching this now, is these boards were touching when we installed them the original day. And as I pass with the screwdriver, this stuff starts to look like shiplap, which is just unbelievable to me. So this is a hard lesson to learn. This is something that you need to consider with these boards. Any kind of boards that are gonna be like pattern boards, like these V-groove boards or bead boards, not really a problem with shiplap, but stuff that's gonna to be touching, you know, you need to consider moisture content, expansion and contraction. And one important note here too, as we're talking about this, is you would never wanna caulk these kind of pattern boards if you were installing them in an exterior application. It's just not something that's gonna last, as you can probably guess from, you know, being out in the elements and the climate changing from season to season. And a lot of people are probably gonna to wanna to know what caulking this was that failed. I wish I could tell you, I don't recall what we were using at this time a year ago. We were kind of going through some different ones, but I wish I would have known because I definitely would have called it out because there are caulkings that are like elastomeric caulkings like Shermax and Big Stretch. They probably wouldn't have given me this issue, but we're gonna go back with a, uh, a better caulking than we were using at this time. So here's a look at everything. Um, cleaned out and you can see some boards didn't separate as bad as others or actually they probably just separated more in one direction and some of the joints I didn't really have to do much work to but you can see just how much gaps there are sporadically throughout these entire sections and it's crazy to cut this caulking out of these sections each one of these individual squares each one took me about 45 minutes to scrape the caulking out of so a huge investment of time, that's not talking about the time to reseal it off and then, you know, finish all the masking and <laughs> just spray it. I mean, this is a, a hard mistake to learn, but like I mentioned earlier, look at that. It looks like shiplap. It's, it's unbelievable. So this stuff moved a ton and uh, I did not foresee that happening. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the caulking and John is just gonna trail behind me and just seal this whole thing off. And what we wanna do here, since the gap is bigger, we do wanna run a, you know, a thicker bead than normally because we wanna fill that in, but at the same time, we don't wanna just lose the architectural detail of the V groove. So we need to watch out for that too, where we could still see that V, but fill in the large gaps from the separation. All right guys, so here's where we're looking at now. We've got this square complete, that one over there complete, and this one basically done. So we're down to this final one over here. You can still see it has the gaps in it. And this is what we're using to fill those gaps. This is Powerhouse from Sherman Williams. It's got a 60 year warranty. So as long as I don't live for another 60 years, we won't get a call back on this job. So I'm really trusting you, Sherwin-Williams. But this stuff should be good to go. No cracking, flexibility, all that good stuff. So yeah, this should do it. All right guys, so everything's filled in. All I have to do now is get in there and spray it. So let's hit it. All right guys, this job is complete. We got that ceiling fixed and this thing should be good to go. I don't think we'll get another call back on this. If Sherwin-Williams is true about that caulking, we should get a call back in 60 years, which I'm 32 right now. So I'll, I don't think I'll live to see the date that this thing splits again, hopefully. At least, yeah, I don't wanna come over here with my you know, elderly self and try to repair this, but I will and I'll make a video about it for sure. So 
<laughs> Can't always show you the good stuff. We gotta show you the bad stuff too, because it's real life. So anyways, we'll catch you on the next video.